art training. I knew how to sew. I could read a dress pattern. And I liked working with fabric. So I thought, well, quilting might be a good thing to try. Little did I know that I'd be doing it as <laughs> sort of a career for the... Um, but I, um, the first thing I did was make a copy of a Christmas card and with huge stitches and big surfaces that weren't quilted and, but I put it in a little art show and somebody bought it. So uh, that was really, really launched me. And I, I found out quickly that I liked doing applique rather than, okay, is that coming up? Ooh, there it is. Yeah. Applique, Ooh. rather than piecing. Piecing is, is pretty ge geometric. Applique is when you sew pieces on top of each other and you can, you know, do any shape you want. It's much more organic. This is, uh, unfortunately, this is not a very good slide, but this is one of my larger pieces that I did a while ago on creation. There, people always ask me, how long does something like this take? This is a, probably about a twin bed size. This is a big quilt. Um, and people ask, how long does it take you to make something like that? It, it takes, it all depends. I, I was telling Jen that I couldn't find, I couldn't decide on the fabric I wanted to use for the people's bodies. And so it sat around for about six months with nothing happening to it until I came across some fabric that I really liked to use for the people, something that was rather neutral. It wasn't, it was, had some little gold flecks and that was what made me like it the best. There's a lot of three-dimensional things on here. The fish are three-dimensional. There's jewels glued onto the serpent. Thanks. There's stuffing under the uh, pink trees. And it's all sort of representing the heart of God. This is before the fall. And I always put in a... I like to put in border collies. Those are, so we'll start this up. Hopefully we're not gonna hear music. Are we going? There we go. This is Friendship Star, the border collie again. The quilt pattern is called Friendship Star. This is um, Chanticleer, which is from the Canterbury Tales. I did a series of quilts based on that. And this is from my Chesapeake studio before we moved here to the Lake of the Woods. We have an open, I try and do an open studio every uh, Christmas season, which got discontinued last year, but oh, maybe this year we'll make it. Sometimes I do little pieces like Christmas stockings. A friend gave me a whole box, uh, whole boxes full of, um, boxes full of samples, discontinued upholstery samples. And I was trying to figure out what to do with them and came up with the idea of doing these Christmas stockings. And I've been doing them ever since. And they're really good sellers on, on Etsy. Um, I, where do I get inspiration? This is one of the things that I just happened to take a shot of. I really like the door knocker. <laughs> and so turned it into some Christmas ornaments. Oh, um, oh, cute. Oh, wonderful. That's cute. And I like to do foxes. <laughs> and you can see I'm starting to paint. I do a little painting on the fabric. There's some pieces that I really liked. And I put them into a quilt. I like doing flowers. So pretty. This was a piece that I entered in a competition cloth, paper and scissors magazine and it uh, won 
Well, you could see the scale, but you can see I'm getting a little more painterly in this. Uh, I've <laughs> been moving in that direction. Inspiration. Yeah. Pansies, that's about um, 12 inch. Some of these flowers are applique from fabric that's already printed and some of the things are things that I paint, like the leaves on this are all me. The, the hydrangeas are painted. So are the leaves on this one. A lot of painting in the background too. I like blending the background. There's pieces of fabric and then I paint over them and blend them in. Mm -hmm. Tulips. Awesome. This is, <laughs> I started wow. out um, <laughs> with this uh, old post office huh. mail thing and now I've ended up with this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you collect fabric. Oh, okay. Well, and then um, going into the paper mache. Are there are any questions about the quilting? Oh, wonderful. I need lessons. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do workshops? Uh, occasionally. I've done them in the past, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me know if you decide to do a workshop. Yes, me too. Uh, I've done them for some you know, quilters killed and things in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, if you're working on something and you want advice, I'm always open to taking a Great. look, giving some advice. Okay. <laughs> um, I, this past summer, my granddaughter came and stayed for a month and she likes art. So I decided to I tried doing some projects. So we, we started doing these paper mache things and she went home and I've continued. I really enjoy doing these. They're very, um, it's like doing sculpture. And so uh, this was one of our first, and we moved on to, these are made with paper plates, believe it or not, folded in half and stuffed. Hmm. And then I got a little more sculptural with the fox. He's got doll legs. He's pretty big. He's about two feet long. This is, I don't know if anyone recognizes this based on the Staffordshire ceramics. Yeah. Victorian mm -hmm. dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my ballerina pigs. <laughs> oh. Oh, cute. <laughs> I've done ballerina foxes. And this is my last. I oh, love those. My ballerina those are so cute. Rabbits. Really cute. Very cute. Um, one of my, my goal with my art is um, to honor our creator. And also I like bringing joy and peace into wherever that my pieces go. I feel like they take some joy and peace into that environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So now I'm going to go do a demonstration of the paper mache. Um, I'm going to demonstrate making a little bird. You take a sheet of our favorite newspaper. <laughs> Not my article, I hope. <laughs> no. And you kind of roll it up into a little ball. That's, that's the body part. And then... Uh, so a lot of this is just scrunching paper together. So we got a little, sort of a little tail shape here and lots of tape. What kind of tape? Uh, masking tape. Okay. You can see it beginning to sort of take a little body form. Lots of tape. I go through whole uh, 
thing is the tape. Okay. Well, that that's a good enough idea. Okay, then for the head, another thing that you can use to stuff with is making um, the head. I use this because I like making the beaks out of the tin foil. So, so I've got a little beak, little beak shape there, and then just sort of squash it, squash it down, and stick it onto my body here. <laughs> More tape. <laughs> and anyway, I think you're getting the idea there. Uh -huh. And uh, you want to, if you want to add some wings, little cardboard pieces here with a kind of flap and more, <laughs> more tape. <laughs> So, and you tape tape your little tape your little wings on. So here is a oh, for goodness tape that's pretty much put together now. Now there's I'm using two methods of material coating them. One is your traditional paper mache with. Um, flour, glue, water, and then paper, strips of paper. And the other is called an air dried paper clay, which I make from, um, I, I use either septic toilet paper <laughs> or, <laughs> or, shred, or the things that have gone through my shredder. And I um, soak that for uh, a few hours till it gets really soggy. And then I sort of squeeze it out. Whoops. Squeeze. Oh, dear. <laughs> We've lo I've lost you again. Here we go. Um, squeeze it out and add joint compound, flour, um, mineral oil, some cornstarch, and you need to just mix it all up. And you come out with this really sloppy stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate that first. This is one that's semi done. You can't do it all at once because you gotta have a place to hold on. So mm -hmm. he's semi done. This is like making a cake. And you use these high tech tools. <laughs> <laughs> for the for the uh, for the clay, I like using this spatula, and you just let's see if I'm sticking it on here. Can you see it going on? Get this camera angle here. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> I like this process. I, I think I like using the clay a little more. And it dries very hard. Um, and you don't have to have it too thick. So. And, and you also, the nice thing about the clay is if you've got a, a dip or something that you don't like the shape of, then you can just put a lot more clay there and shape it out a little more. The paper method, which I will do now, is a little sloppier. This works well with the uh, clay too. And you can leave, you know, the ridges, you can poke things into the clay. This is, uh, this is, just flour and water and glue. There, all these recipes are YouTube things. So you take 
Make some little paper strips. Coat, coat it with your glue. And then just start wrapping it on. You have to do two or three layers of, of this to get it, when it dries, it gets hard. Some more, it's really nice, sloppy, fun stuff to play with. The kids <laughs> love <laughs> so. so here's one that is dried with all the paper and you can see it's nice and hard. Oh my. You know, it starts off, you know, wiggly and everything, but by the time the everything's dried, but this one is really hard. <laughs> that's that's the bir a bird finished. And then paint them white and then take acrylic paint and just play around. You can do whatever you want. Oh. Not a can see this is the this is the uh, clay one and you can see it's just a little rougher <laughs> and then this is the uh, paper one and then you can see it's a little less rough but uh, I say the nice very thing cute. about the you can fill in spaces if you've left something off and um, these I probably am going to put a little screw eye and, uh, and make them a little ornament that hangs. Um, I'll show you a bigger one I've been working on. I've been trying to come up with an idea Oh, my fabric, because I have all this fabric. So I, I glued what? fabric on here and then oh, painted gosh. on top of it. So this oh, one's goodness. quite finished, but it's it's getting there. Mm. How, long, how long? Do, how long do you have to let it dry, and uh, can you sand it? Yes, yeah. yes, you can sand it. Um, Twenty-four hours, and you can also there's as I say there's a lot of YouTube things. Um, they recommend like on this on this if you go over it with a very thin layer of joint compound, you can get a much smoother. Uh -huh critter. I'll show you a couple more of the animals back here that I've made. This is my big, my big fox. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Mm. cute. Oh, oh cute. That. Oh. That's great. Uh, one. <laughs> oh. So is cute. A little detachable tutu here. <laughs> we have to make room for her little tail. <laughs> she can have a wardrobe. Yeah, she could. Yeah, I, seasonal. Could, I advertise it on Etsy and that you could use it for jewelry. You know, you put it on a dresser and you could hang little neck mm -hmm. and stuff from it. Mm -hmm. This is... Uh, reindeer that I was making. I was going to make these for Christmas, but it's the antlers are way too time consuming. So mm. I just kept that one. I bet. <laughs> so any uh, questions about any of this stuff? Oh, I'll show one other thing. Jen wanted me to show you. I'm working on a big commission for um, the silver chair, which is Narnia, and, uh -oh. and with a thumbnail. This has been approved by the guy who's commissioning it. Uh -huh. And I'm going to draw a full size quilt, which or drawing, which is um, or cartoon, which it'll be about forty eight inches, I think. Wow! So hmm. it's going to be a big one. Mm. And then oh, the back. and I, you, it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. Then you just start cutting the pieces of fabric and then sewing them back together. It's amazing. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. Mm. Do you sew that by hand or machine or both? Oh well, you know, when I first started quilting, everything had to be done by hand. It was. Then the art quilt movement started, 
and um, using machine for everything became much more acceptable. And then they got these long arm machines that can do fantastic designs and everything. So it's changed quite a bit since I've been quilting. Mm -hmm. I have a few quilts that were done all by hand, uh, meaning the applique was done by hand, putting the binding on or something like that I do with the machine. But um, nowadays, almost everything I do is with the machine. Hardly ever do something by hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, it's faster. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I'll show you. Inspiring. I've got, I've got um, I'll show a couple actual pieces here. She also sells successfully on Etsy, and I think maybe. Oh, oh my. Wow. Oh, that's. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Painting. Yeah, a lot of. I, I have. Um, there's some paint that has mica in it, and, and I really. I wanted to use that, so. <laughs> oh, you can see <laughs> it's shiny. Yeah. For making uh -huh. this. That's good. But and I also wow. like to try and get away from, you know, a perfectly squared border. I like, I like a little more organic shape. Is that on a canvas? What, what's the yes. backing on yeah, it? Back. It's like on a oh, okay. yep. piece of canvas. Mm -hmm. But what makes a quilt is having three layers. So there's a back piece of fabric, a inner layer of batting, and then the top. That's the technical right. description of a quilt. Do you want to just mention uh, what your pieces sell for on Etsy? Um, yeah, uh, I find that on Etsy, things that are under 100 do the best. And so, like my stockings sell for 55. And um, uh, the, let's see, I think, I think I have pansies on there for uh, 125, something like that, but that includes shipping. So shipping is becoming because it's so so expensive. And um, what about for like the pig and the fox? Yeah. Oh, um, the pig is a hundred and thirty-nine, and it cost me probably thirty-five or forty to mail it. Unbelievable. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> I was depends where in the country mm -hmm. you sell yes. it, I think. I yeah, don't know it has gone up selling out to California and Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Right. I groan when I see that. <laughs> yeah, when we were talking, I was saying it, you know, she works in the shipping cost to on the Etsy, but for like our show, you won't need to do that. Oh, you know? yeah. Just, oh, cute. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Do you paint all the eyes on or? Yes, I paint okay. all the eyes. Okay. And I, 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 so far I haven't put a varnish on them, but I'm thinking somebody bought one and wished it had a varnish on it. So I'm thinking I might start varnishing them. It looks kind of shiny. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you paint it enough, you know, the acrylic has has some shine to it, so. How fragile are they? If so, if somebody dropped one, does it break in some way? Yeah, it would. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it depends. Um, what you happened? One of the foxes in it, and it did get destroyed, mm -hmm. and I refund the, oh. the money, because. Oh. The main thing was the the dowel rod that is supporting them. Made those. Uh, that got broken, and that that mm -hmm. sort of ripped a leg off. And uh, so, but yeah, they're they're not a great thing for shipping. Huh. So putting them in the show will be a great a great thing. This this is a fish I'm working on. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> You can see I'm having fun with these. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. 
going to compete with um, the fish that Joe and Elaine make, ceramic yeah. fish. Yeah, there's all kinds of fish good. here. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> Do you work at this like every day, all day? It's it looks like so well, many hours. Oh, I used to. I you know the older I get, the less time I seem to. Oh, it's just beautiful. Thanks. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. Bravo for doing that. Thank you.